Club musical, but um, next presenter will be the Shrine of the Black Madonna. They'll take a few minutes to present some information that they have. Um, please put your hands together for Baba Ola Tunji from the Shrine of the Black Madonna. Thank you. Thank you. I wear a lot of hats around here. Uh, but we do want to take this opportunity to, to celebrate with you uh, some of the blessings that we have received as a, uh, as a nation building institution. Uh, Shrines of the Black Madonna Pan African Orthodox Christian Church. Uh, we are now 68 years young. And uh, our founder, Jeremoji Abebe Ajiman, his parents uh, were Garveyites. So we are tied to Garveyism by the umbilical cord. Uh, we grew up, we were nursed on the programs of Marcus Messiah Garvey and the UNIA in the early 1900s. Uh, we believe in the idea of Pan-Africanism and nation building is the only solution that we have as black people. We do not believe in integration. Uh, integration will not solve our problems. We believe that we must build and maintain our own institutions. And that's not something that is too far-fetched. If you know the history of black people, we were the first to create institutions. We were the first to build schools and libraries and, uh, and civilization uh, on this planet. And so in all of our institutions that we, we teach that to our babies, so they grow up understanding that they are not uh, just slaves, that they are the, they are those who the ancestors has passed down a great culture, the greatest culture and civilization are on the planet. And so some 68 years ago, we started with this idea in Detroit, Michigan, where our mother shrine is. And uh, we own all of the institutions that we put together there. Uh, we have culture centers there. We have uh, our uh, spiritual institutions. We have our community service institutions as well. And under the leadership of Jeremoji Abebe Ajman, when we left Detroit on a mission to expand the nation, we moved to Atlanta, uh, where we built Shrine 9. And uh, we're in Houston, uh, Texas as well. Uh, Shrine 10 is there, where we have uh, institutions there, cultural centers, we have community service centers, uh, programs that serve the interests of black people there and around the country. About some uh, 10 years or so ago, we understood that in order to be free, we have to have the ability to feed ourselves. So we had our missionaries that used to go out, maybe you have seen them in the past, uh, shaking the cans. Some of you were probably running from them. Some of you donated. And people over time said, well, you know, y'all just collecting all this money, y'all always, you know, begging for money. What y'all doing with the money? Well, about 10 years ago, we bought 4,000 acres of farmland in Abbeville, South Carolina. And uh, October of last year, we burnt the mortgage on it. So it's ours free of mortgage. It's the largest black owned farm uh, in America. And we're very proud of that. When we expanded our institution to become true Pan-Africanists uh, in uh, Liberia, West Africa, uh, the government there said, well, hey, we heard about y'all got a farm in America. We got plenty of land here. That diamonds are just popping up out of the ground. If y'all want some more farmland, you know, you can get it here as well. And uh, one thing about farming, it's more than a notion. That's right. Uh, we celebrated for almost a week when we got the farmland in Abbeville, South Carolina. And once we sell it down, we're like, okay, now who gonna, who gonna do the farming? <laughs> you know? It felt like a lot of us was from the city didn't know nothing about farming. But we understood that in order to build a nation, we gotta be able to feed ourselves. So over the years, we have been literally uh, putting in the plumbing in the ground and, and getting lights coming up and building everything that is essential. We got uh, five acres of, um, of uh, uh, fishing where we growing our own fish. We have our own fish processing plant there. We have uh, artesian water running under the ground. We got eight miles of lakeshore property. So we're looking to build uh, resorts and educational institutions all on beautiful land. So if you need a place to go, we remember when we got ready to have a, a, a outing, we would go out to a, one of these parks and rent spaces at the park. And just like you have your music going here, 
And then the people would come around and say, y'all need to turn y'all music down. Well, on your own land, you ain't got to turn your music down. <laughs> All right? So now we have that land, and the recent uh, fortune that has happened to us is that uh, pet, uh, Africanism, black Christian nationalism is spreading around the world. And now we have, a, 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 in addition to Liberia, where we got three uh, communities growing there, and we're building uh, hospitals, we're building schools there. We now uh, have a project in Nigeria where uh, Pan-Africanism under the shrines of the Black Madonna banner is, uh, is being done right now today. So we don't just talk about nation building. We can take you to all those places, put your hands on the institutions, and you know what is necessary to build the organizational structure that would allow brothers and sisters to come together, put aside our own individual pursuits, and then work collectively together for the entire group. That's not an easy thing, and I know all of you know about it. But to be able to be together for 68 years and still growing is a testament to our program and to our strategy. So uh, we are always open for our brothers and sisters to become a part of this process, and not only that, to be a part of collaborations. We know that everybody won't be in the same organization, but there are certain organizations that's moving in the same way moving down the same avenue, our brothers and sisters. So we're developing strategies that allow us to be able to work with the UNIA, to work with other uh, black nationalist organizations. And yes, sometimes we work with our integrationist brothers and sisters as long as it's dealing with the needs of black people. So if you're feeding black people, if you're housing black people, we will unite with you around those grounds. And by working together, we can work out all the other problems that we think are problems that's keeping us from uh, coming together. So uh, our cultural center has taken on a new initiative to take the lead in developing these organizations with you and others. So feel free to come to the cultural center and talk about collaborations. There's a lot of things that we can do collectively together that will be mutually uh, beneficial. So we, uh, we invited the uh, uh, sister, I want to I give a shout out to uh, Sister Rosa, uh, Rosalie Robinson. And uh, she's back there at our table. If you look back, she's got a blue nursing thing on. She's 40, 40 years, look at her raising her hand. Come up here for a quick moment, uh, Sister Rosa. We told Sister Rosa that we needed to uh, help mass our people up. So Sister Rosa went out and she got us some 2,000 masks. Right. So if you need masks for the family, we got masks, we got uh, uh, sanitizer back there at that table, and I just want to give her a word about, about that. Now, I'm, I'm very cautious of giving Sister Rosa the mic, but come on, Sister Rosa, and say just say one thing about the mass and how you serve the community. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be of service. I'm a retired Grady nurse. I've been an RN for 46 years. Peace and blessings, a lot of y'all might know me. I've taken care of a lot of your ancestors, your, your grandma, and, your, and, and, and I don't want to go too deep with it, but uh, brother, uh, I was soon you asked me would I participate in helping him with this endeavor, and I did, and I'm glad. And uh, we gotta keep it going. And make sure you protect yourself, wash your, wash your hands, wear your mask, and this is serious. It's a form of, um, what they call it a form of? Damage, trying to alive. get rid of us. Alive. Yeah, that's what it is. So when they have a new virus out now since the Delta one. They got one that came out this week. So we just have to be more careful because it's bioterrorism. That's what the word I was looking for. That's what this is. So thank you all for coming out and stay safe. All right. Give Sister Rosa a hand, please. Yeah, this is a very stressful time for us as, as black people. Our family members, friends are all trying to figure out whether they're going to take the shot or whether they're going to try to fortify their immune system. Uh, and, and it can get very stressful. And, uh, but um, uh, me for one, I'm never getting in the line where white people giving out anything. Especially anything for free. I, I just... As, they, as the old people say, I know too much about it. But whatever you need to do to secure yourself and your family, you know, that's your individual choice. So uh, do all the research you can and make a wise uh, decision on it. Uh, we did invite out um, Dr. Henderson here, and she's a, a, a naturopathic doctor. And hopefully she'll get here before it's all over. 
but she was going to come out and talk about some of the uh, natural ways that you can fortify your immune system to be able to fight off any uh, virus that might you know, try to infect you. Um, and hopefully she'll be here to, to join us uh, with that. We want to give Fulton County uh, Health Department a hand. They got a little table out there and she's been sitting out there in the sun. So go by Fulton County Health Department and get that information. Uh, there's a lot of services that's being made available uh, to them. Uh, I also want to mention very quickly uh, a service that has helped me and my family and that's uh, Invest Atlanta. If you are a entrepreneur and you got your paperwork together, that's what you need. You need your, pay you need your license, okay? You need to have your documentation together because there's all kind of uh, grants and low interest loan that's available for entrepreneurs and we want to uh, take advantage of, of that as well. Um, so all the uh, other vendors, uh, we want to also thank our uh, political uh, wing, the Black Slate, they're over there in that corner over there. The Black Slate has always worked very hard to get our people to vote the right way. And I don't mind saying it, that it was the efforts of the Black Slate and others that turned Georgia what? Blue. blue. Turned Georgia blue. There's nothing that we cannot do if we come together, if we organize. Can you get this now? They said that they passed a law that if you give people what? Water. Okay, if you give them water while they're standing in line to vote, that's a what? Felony. Yeah, that, that lets you know how crazy this thing is. And then don't let nobody fool you. The last president literally tried to pull a coup. He tried to pull a coup. So that helps you to understand the position that we're in in uh, Ku Klux Klan America. So we're forced to deal with the reality that we need to build and maintain our own institutions. Black like, State, come on up and say a word or two. Give them a hand, y'all. They get some real hard work. What's up, my brothers? What's up, my sisters? How y'all doing? All right. Okay, y'all know we got an election coming up in November, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. We got an election coming up in November. Yes, sir. Okay, the Black State needs volunteers, and we are paying. What? Okay, we are paying. We need you to sign up with me. I'm at that, I'm at that back table back there on the left. That's where I am. You sign up, and we need people to work on Saturdays. And, uh, with the, with the, and also the election day, which will be all day on 11th of the day. But well, that's not until November, though. But on this, starting this coming Saturday on the 28th, and every Saturday thereafter, we need people, so we're signing people up now. So if you're interested in making a few dollars on Saturday, get me up over here at the table back here. I got you, okay? Right there at the table, back over there, all right? Yes, sir. You're tired. Right. I'll help you out. What's up? I'm going to pay. I also want to give a shout out to Brother uh, K. Fing and, and his, uh, his uh, group who have been revitalizing the work of our uh, community service center. Uh, a couple of weeks ago they had an event right out here in the same park, brought a lot of community service organizations together. So uh, Brother K. Fing has been very instrumental in getting that process going. We want to give a shout out to him and all those who volunteered their efforts to, uh, to work with them. Uh, it's a beautiful thing when brothers and sisters come together and work together to serve the community. In doing so, we also uh, serve ourselves. Um, we, uh, we are still alive and, and well. Because of the virus, we, we've shut down our institutions from uh, uh, in-house service. But we're online, Shrine of Black Madonna online. You'll find that our church service is every uh, Sunday. And then we have a, a work program on Wednesday and uh, a number of other things that we offer to you. If you go to shrineoftheblackmadonna.org, you can see all of the organizational efforts that we are actively uh, involved in. So we have still been working and moving forward to uh, serve our communities. And um, there's always a tendency that I might forget somebody, but I want to uh, thank our security force, the, the Maccabees. We got to be able to defend whatever we put together. And they're some of the hardest brothers and sisters who are, are in the nation because they have committed their lives to serving and defending uh, the black nation. And we got to be able, uh, the first law of nature is what? Self-defense. That's survival. So we have to be able to take care of ourselves as a people. We do need brothers and sisters who take that, committed, that commitment seriously. So we want to thank um, uh, the, uh, the Maccabee Force. And also, I see a lot of good brothers and sisters that I've been able, I've been blessed to be able to work with uh, over the years. And I want to thank you for coming out. Uh, stand up and raise your hand, uh, Shelly. I want to direct people to Shelly right here in the black and white. 
Uh, she has her own tour agency. Whoa. Shelly, come on up for a minute and, and say something about that. Travel, travel, all right. So if you got family and relatives that's trying to come to Atlanta, or you know friends that's trying to put together a family reunion, you want to hook up with, with, with Shelly, because she does a great job with her tour agency. Oh, hello everyone. Oh, oh, because I guess I didn't plan anything, but I can kind of give you an introduction to myself. Um, <clears throat> I've been in the tour and hospitality industry for over oh, about 30 some years. <laughs> Something that I didn't plan on getting in, I was a student in college at JSU. Um, and one day my college professor came to me because that was in the 80s and they weren't hiring black people in this area. And so <laughs> I told him, man, that's not my problem. He said, well, Shelly, you know, you need to take this test. I said, I'm not going to take that test. And he was over the department. He was over the uh, history department for, the, uh, for what I was majoring. And so I'm trying to graduate and get out of here. And he came back to me one day and threw that test in front of me and said, Shelly, you need to take this test because I think it may be good for you. Boy, it's something how somebody not even related to you could change your whole life. Whoa. So I took the test, and then I, a lady came to me one day, and I don't know how the word got around that Shelly scored so high on the test, she in the top 10% of the whole U.S. I said, wow, was I the only person who took the test? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I took that test, and I ended up going into D.C., and I worked there as a seasoner, and um, they wouldn't hire, this is a, the National Park Service, they wouldn't hire black folks at a large rate. I really, um, probably still today, the same thing. I took that test, and I saw it working from site to site, from state to state, so my thing was, I'm gonna fly all over the United States, I'm gonna go from state to state to state. I ended up going, <laughs> coming to Atlanta, in the 80s, if anybody know what's going on in Atlanta in the 80s, yeah. so we had Dr. Martin Luther King site coming about, right? 1980, I came in in 1988. And uh, that site, I tell you, it kind of changed me, really. Because I had people who would say, come in, and and I was telling someone about this today, go ahead a tour today. They said, well, have some hot tea. I said, I don't like hot tea, I like iced tea. <laughs> so, but I came in, I took that tea, and I drank that tea, and we came in, and we were about five or six of us, and we changed the whole site. And if you go back today, if you notice, you don't see a lot of folks that probably look like me once they open back up. It took about five or six people to come in and build that site, and that's one of the top sites in the whole state of Georgia today. But what I do now, I do tours, I do travel, and I'm kind of reinventing myself because I'm getting ready to get out of this and kind of retire. I told somebody, look at this, I'm retired, I'm going to Ghana. <laughs> that's my thing. But I think black people should have a relationship with Ghana. Yeah. I'm a pan Africanist myself. All right. And we do have chapters all over the world. I think we got about 15 in Africa. <laughs> And we had our, um, and I don't know if Mama Bantu is here, because we had our last meeting, of, uh, uh, what was that, January or February? We did it on Zoom. And we, were, we had languages, I guess about 20 different languages speaking in, in one place. So right now, I'm really dedicated to what we are trying to do. I do believe that um, when we integrate, I think we separate us, because I look, if you read the history of our people, I told somebody, now a lot of folks don't realize this, it shouldn't have took us five million years to make one black person. A lot of folks think somebody spit on the ground and balled it up in a piece of dirt, I don't, I don't go there, but a lot of folks, you got your own. Uh -huh, it took us over five million years to make one black human. Now, if everybody else came from this human, you know you can't possibly be on the bottom. You're at the top of the barrel. Thank you. What's the site? What's the site? Yeah. Thank you, Shelly. Contact information. So you're looking for travel or uh, business? See Sister Shelly, she'll give you all the details and information uh, about her business because we need to support each other. Very quickly, I want to mention our babies. Uh, we have our Keebleland Youth Program, and we start our children off from the time they are potty trained. We're not waiting until they're five years old or under that nonsense. And uh, I just want to mention to all of you the Akiva Land Youth Program. If you want to get your child into a program that's going to uh, have teachers that really love themselves and love our people, our Akiva Land Youth Program is the program, one of the programs you want to consider. Uh, my granddaughter, uh, Sister uh, Camila, 
Uh, she is graduating, she just graduated from uh, Pearl Academy. Those of you who know Mama Virgie over at Pearl Academy, a uh, great program. That's another great youth development program. And so she came out of the shrine and went over there with Mama Virgie who continued to nurture her. And now uh, she graduated at the age of 14. And so she did came out, yeah, you can clap for that, at the age of 14. Beautiful young sister. And uh, she applied for, I think, about seven or eight colleges and got accepted to all of them. And so uh, her mother's worked out a situation where she will be going into uh, the fall year or uh, into college uh, and she'll be 15 at that point. So we're talking about producing the exceptional uh, black child in our youth program. And for those uh, independent programs uh, that are still around today, we applaud your efforts to continue to teach our children the truth about our history and about our culture so we can raise up a powerful uh, next generation. Uh, I want to uh, just thank all of the volunteers who showed up from the uh, Black Christian Nationalist Movement and the UNIA Movement to make this happen uh, here today. I want to personally thank all of you. I know it's very difficult for some to make the decision to come out with what's all that's going on. I want to remind you once again that we do have a free mass uh, back over there for those who want to mass up for your family. And we got some hand sanitizers over there as well. So if you need that, uh, stop by uh, the cultural center table right over here to the left coming in the gate and pick up those things and share with, uh, with family members who might have a need. Uh, for that. Seems like every year is something something coming up, right? Every year. Every year, every year something is one virus, it was a what the, the chicken virus and the, a SARS virus and, and now it's another virus and so we gotta prepare ourselves for what's happening. Come on up. Come on up. And uh, I know a lot of the organizations that we have been working with in the past. Uh, another time I want to mention one other time the San Conscious Drummers. Give them another hand, San Conscious Drummers. Uh, they always come out and support our overall effort, so we really, we really appreciate the drummers. Okay. Greetings, everyone. My name is Mama Javina. And I'm from the uh, African community. I represent Wadu. I represent Wadu, and um, I would just like to ask uh, Brother Olatunji, what time is your uh, church program on Sunday? What time does it come on? It's on uh, uh, virtual. Okay, 1130. Okay. Thank you. And if you all uh, are interested in what I do, you can reach us at www.global.com. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, I want to thank all of you uh, for coming out. And I definitely want to give a great shout out to um, uh, Sister Amanika, who just assumed the responsibility of leading our cultural center. And uh, under a lot of stress and strain, but it's a part of her effort to uh, make this happen. So we really appreciate uh, her work. And I uh, also uh, want to give a hand, a uh, shout out to, uh, to Brother John. Brother John, uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, we remember the, the work that was done by Ross Marvin. And uh, in 2019, Ross Marvin was leading the UNA chapter here, and we helped to make this foundation. And now, uh, Brother John has uh, assumed that banner and so uh, we appreciate him uh, working with us in this effort also. And before I leave, I, I definitely have to say something about Mama Nabatu. Come on up, uh, Mother Nabatu, and let her have a, 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 another queen mother in our community share a couple of words with us. Hotep, Barigani, Awakon Salam, Awakon Salam. If I said it right, if I said it wrong, forgive me. Um, I am here representing one of my hats. I have about 10 of them. But uh, right now, uh, we're working on the Pan-African Federalist Movement, which is to bring into political existence the United African States. Yeah. And we all know that it's time. You know, Brother Nkrumah, Marcus Garvey, yeah. Lumumba, George Padmore, I can go on and on yeah. about all the ancestors who talked about Africa needs to be united as one. Every single ethnic group in this country has a, has a place to go, for, what they call home. Our home is Africa. And as many of you know, China is a, trying to take it over. 
The French are trying to take their peace. Great Britain is trying to get their peace. Japan is trying to get their peace. Everybody wants a piece of Africa but us. And I've been there several times. And the last time I was there, um, when I got off the plane in East uh, Nigeria, half the people on the plane were either white or Asian. And I know they weren't coming to see no relatives, except for those Asians who have, have made, their place, made Africa their home. They have places in Africa where the signs are in Mandarin. They have signs, and they got a restaurants where um, you can't go in there if you're black after six o'clock. And in some of the restaurants the Chinese have, you can't go in there at all. They do not hire us to do what they're doing. It's time for us to move forward. So I'm be walking around with a petition. If you are interested, or you believe what I believe, that we need to have Africa as our home and that it needs to be united as one, you can sign this petition. If you want to take it another further, we have what we call the call. And it has several questions on it. If you believe in one of those questions, if you can say yes to each, at least one of them, then we want you to sign the call. And that will get you involved. There is a meeting tonight at 6.30 on Zoom. So if any of you sign up, um, you know, you can go on your phone, you can get on Zoom and what have you. But it's time, y'all. It's time. And we're looking at within the next 10 years, by 10, 2030, we, we should have control over it. And we have five regions in the, on the continent, four in the diaspora. All right. Okay, and the diaspora includes North America and Canada. We have South America. We have the Caribbean. So, and we have representatives each one. And we meet, you know, every month to talk about what's happening on the ground. This is a bottom-up movement. I'm taking too much time, I can get off right now. <laughs> it's a bottom-up movement because the movements in the past was from the top down, it didn't work. It didn't work. We need the people. We need to get all the people together to understand we have to unite Africa. And I don't know if you know, but 70, was it 70, 60 to 70 percent of the population of, of the continent of Africa are 35 years and younger. That's a lot of young people who are miseducated and need to be educated. So that's what we're doing on the ground, and I hope you can join us in this effort. Thank you for the time. Amen, amen. Good mother Nabatu. Another hand. Hard-working uh, black woman. And if you didn't know it, black women keep our skies from falling. So we appreciate all of the sisters. Um, also want to mention on behalf of our leadership here in this region, Bishop Mwenda Yazi, we want to thank everybody uh, for coming out to share this day uh, with us. And we hope that you'll stay connected with us in one way or the other. Uh, so I want to turn it back over to, uh, to Brother John. Continue to enjoy yourself. And like I said, if you can, you know, hit all of the vendors by a little something from everybody. And this is how uh, we support our own selves and build our own institutions. Thank you. Thank you, Baba Ola Tunji. Um, we're just going to take a quick break, uh, let the DJ come back in for a few minutes. And in about five minutes, we're going to bring on uh, the main speaker presented by the UNIA ACL. So uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> 